Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Um, today, we're going to talk about conditional trading. So last, you know, a couple of times we've talked about market trading and limit orders, limit trading. So conditional trading is something a little bit different, a little bit unique. And I just want to kind of highlight, first of all, where you find that stuff. So what you'll see is down below, we've got the positions that we have open. And then you'll have your closed PL. Then you have active. Active are things that are actively trying to be uh, filled. So you've got an order that's in the system and you're waiting for it to fill. And conditional are basically uh, orders that act when a trigger occurs. And when that trigger is met, it then becomes an active order that's trying to be filled. So it's kind of like a three-step process. You can go from conditional, wait for trigger, then active, actively trying to trade, and then go to position. What you'll see is that, for example, we had a big drop here. It was 8,000, went all the way down to 7,400. Now you might be thinking to yourself, shoot, you know, what should I do? Should I get in on this one? Should I sit? Should I wait? Should I get out? You know, what should I do? And it's normal because, um, you know, we're in a unique place here. We've done a big drop. And so, you know, you might be thinking, I'll do a market order and just, I think it's come to a bottom. I do a market order. I'm going to buy it, you know, at this position right here. And of course, that's where you go into market up at the top here. You have a price of 7434. You'd buy, let's say, 10,000 contract and you click buy along. And of course, that would execute the trade um, and do it immediately. Then, of course, there's the limit order where you can say, I only want to buy it if the price is, let's say, less than where I am, which would be, let's call it, I want to order it at 74.29, so I'm five points below. So if it drops a little bit down, I'll buy it. That's great. Now, the thing is that when you actually get into a situation like we are now where you do a big drop down, you're probably not going to want to necessarily take a chance on buying it in this range in here someplace, hoping that it's going to continue to bounce back up because it might and it might not. So what you can do is in, rather than setting an order that's a limit, which is the limit is the max I want to buy less than where we are, what if I want to buy it higher? Because I want to wait till I see some movement to the upside so that I can then say, you know what, it's moving up, therefore I'm going to jump in. That's where conditional trades come in and are very, very useful because what you're doing is you're basically saying, I will do a market order to buy at 7,800, but only under the condition that the trigger of 7,800 hits that I would then want to buy a quantity of 10,000. So when I do that buy long, and I put that in the system, you'll see that it doesn't provide me this the traditional stop loss and limit order functionality. And the reason for that is because we don't know what price we'll actually execute at. All we know is we're putting an order in the system and that order will execute from 7,800 up, upwards and, um, or downwards because it might touch 7,800 trigger, come down a bit and you could end up less than 7,800. So because we don't know what price we'll get, it's a little bit difficult to determine what the stop loss and limit order will be, which is why it's not here. Of course, it also means you've got to keep a really good eye on this because the last thing you want is to get pulled into something and then to be down, you know, three, four hundred dollars, three thousand dollars, whatever. So let's confirm that order. And I'm just going to show you guys now what conditional orders look like. So you'll see I've got a single order in here that says that, you know, basically a quantity of 10,000, which is the only thing I can modify. It's a market order. And if the price is greater than or equal to 7,800, I will then be able to go ahead and you know, execute that trade. And the distance right now is 372.5. So we'll have to actually go up 372.5 points before we can execute that trade. So that's, of course, you know, uh, putting us in a condition where we're protecting ourselves so we don't enter a trade before we should. And we um, can catch it on the way up rather than, you know, try to find the bottom. Sometimes not the best idea to, find, to do fishing or you know, fishing for the bottom. So in this case, it's a very nice thing to do. It's something I like to do because you're actually setting an order that's comfortable, that's outside the bounds of this negative sell-off of 500 points. Now on that point about, about uh, conditional trades, let me show you something else that will also create conditional trades, which is you know, if we have a, an open position and we go ahead and set the stop loss and the take profit in the system, and I put it at 25% and 5%, for example, you'll notice that when I execute these, I'm going to create conditional trades. The conditional trade is that if I get to 25% profit, then I'm going to execute a trade to sell. And if I were to down, go down by 5%, then I would also have the same situation of at the drop of 5% down to 7360. I would also then move that trade to an active trade to close the position. I'll show you what I mean by that. Trailing stops, we're gonna cover that next week. It's another really cool version of conditional trades. 
It's one of my favorite things to use, especially in volatile markets. So let me show you what happens now anyway. So when we go now and look at the conditional, you see it went from one to three. So now I've got three conditional trades in here. So remember, I've got a position here of 500 quantity, the stop loss being 73.60, the take profit at 78.25, and let's go back and look at the other condition. So you see there's your 73.60 with a distance of 65. There's your um, profit taking at 78.25. It's a distance of 400. But while these trades are going on, we have another order in the system that if we get to 7,800, it's going to buy another 10,000. So ironically, we might be in a really weird situation where we execute in order to buy 7,800, 7,800 buy 10,000, but at the same time, we're going to sell when it hits 7,825 for the previous order. Now that's kind of interesting because it means that if you've got some orders that are in and you want to exit them and you've got other orders you're creating at the same time, you can have multiple things going at the same time, but you know, it's a little bit weird and I wouldn't really recommend doing that. It's just to show you guys that the way this works is these are all different conditional orders. They're all based on distance from where you are today to where you want to be. And where you want to be is that distance. So I'm aiming to get to 73.60 and right now 74.27. And so the distance between the two is 66.5. So that's why they're called conditional because we're waiting for a condition to be met. And when the condition is met, then it triggers. And the trigger is what moves it to become an active order in the system waiting to be filled. Um, so that's how conditional orders work in part. The other thing you can do with conditional orders is if you have an open position like this, rather than use conditional to buy, you can also use a condition to sell. So I can go in here to conditional and rather than do a buy, I could do a sell. And I would do exactly the same thing, but in reverse where I would have the quantity of 500. So of course I would modify that to 500. And then I would decide my trigger price and the market order price for that trade. And I could literally protect myself um, in other conditions going in exactly the opposite way of the way I use the conditional trade for the buy side. But don't worry guys, I will get into this tons more detail. There's lots of stuff to cover here. So we'll leave it there. Hope you guys love this. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, um, hit that bell on your way out. And remember, we'll be back for more episodes. I'll be covering up trailing stops next. Another type of really cool way to do conditional trading and one of my favorites. So see you soon. Until next time.